Welcome to SOGCAST number 24. And I want to thank, as always, Jocko Willink Productions for making this possible in conjunction with SOG Chronicles. Today we're rejoined uh, by Pat Watkins, and we're going to start with August 23rd, 1968, which was a day of a tragic day for Special Forces history where 16 Green Berets were killed in one night battle at FOB4 in Da Nang at the time. And I'm going to read a couple of uh, sections from On the Ground about that night, and um, then we'll go right to Pat Watkins with his personal involvement that night. And it was a night with no moon, and it was after midnight, after a some people had done some drinking, <laughs> and the the NBA sappers had planned this attack for over a year, and they came through the wire, they were in the base, and then they launched the attack. And that night, Pat was up in the in the residential barracks in the yeah, in the yeah. uh, Trans- visitor transit, traveling, transit, transit barracks. Yeah, man. So you're Conlon. up there with Pigpen. And AKA and Parks, Joe Collin. And Parks was there too, Spider. Until he left to go back down to House my, 22. He took my Swedish K and left. <laughs> <laughs> left me with a 45. So that night you had gone back to the transit barracks and then reading from the book, when the first aerial flares ignited over FOB4 compound, Pat Watkins and Sergeant Joe Collin hit the floor of the transient barracks amid the rattle of gunfire. An inexperienced first lieutenant stood looking out a window. The lieutenant's silhouette made a perfect target. A high explosion erupted just outside the barracks, knocking the lieutenant on his ass. He sat there in shock, clutching his right arm where a piece of shrapnel had gouged a nasty wound. As Conlon moved to dress the lieutenant's wounds, another massive explosion rocked the building so hard that the light fixtures fell from the ceiling. Figuring that the transit barracks were next in line to receive a satchel charge through a window or doorway, Watkins shouted that they should move out into a larger area of the hallway where they might have a chance to fend off an attack. Conlon low crawled to the left to cover the east end of the hallway. Watkins sneaked his right to his right cursing himself because he let Spider Parks borrow his a, his a Swedish K 9mm submachine gun. Watkins continued crawling through the end of the hallway. He froze, silhouetted by the flare light in the doorway, an NVA soldier cautiously peered in to determine if anyone inside was still alive. He was also trying to ignite a satchel charge, but was having some difficulty. The sapper gave up on the satchel charge, and Watkins saw a hand grenade rolling down the hall towards him. Watkins quickly fired two rounds at the sapper and shouted, Grenade! Instinctively, he covered his head with his hands, and the force of the explosion pushed Watkins back down the hall, peppering his hands, arms, and back with shrapnel. He figured this was it. He was as good as dead. That historic night. My God, Pat. Yeah, that's... Uh, and again, by again, we're welcoming Pat Watkins to uh, our podcast, Returning. Thank you for coming back. Well, you got the car keys, so I had to... <laughs> <laughs> it's always the key. <laughs> it's a, yeah, that's... Uh, as you said, it's, uh, to this day, it's the most loss of casualties in one battle. Special forces. For special. And uh, another thing, too, is uh, there were 66 Purple Hearts given up. That night. That night. For that action. For that action. And not counting the uh, support the Sioux. Uh, right, our indigenous and, troops. Yeah, s- special commando units that we had that got killed, too. And they killed our they killed the uh, Vietnamese cooks that were in getting breakfast ready for the for the people, they slit their throats too. Those were the two men that went down to the indigenous mess hall, mm-hmm. and unbeknownst to them, before the attack was launched, the NVA sappers had infiltrated into the base FOB4 in Da Nang, and 
they went and using the indigenous troops mess hall for a final briefing before they launched the attack. Yeah, it was definitely an inside job. Clearly. Yeah, it's, it's kind of ironic because I, I was a Fubai with you, of course, as a cover writer, and so right. was Spider Parks, uh, who was your one zero at one time. And uh, I just put a team on the ground in the ash house and, and come back from and landed at, at Fubai and turned it over to Hillsboro because right. it was getting, getting bad. And Spider was waiting for me in the Jeep which we did, uh, you know, to get a ride back to sure. Fubai, to the compound. And he had, he says, I got your uniform and stuff here. And I said, what? He had a clean uniform. He says, we got to go to an award, to a, a promotion, promotion board. board. And now it, it takes some real brains to, to establish, <laughs> a, you know, promotion board. This got to be, you know, senior officers on a vanity kick. <laughs> For us goddamn <laughs> soldiers fighting for our lives to go stand there and ask if they, we know our general orders or some kind of crap. I was, you know, I had, at that time, I had over 10 years in the service, you know. Right, sure. And, but anyhow, to make a long story short, we got it. We jumped on a King B uh, with John Peters was on it. and and Doug Godshaw. Doug, Doug was on it. And was also, with John Walton on it with you? John was sure. on it. John was on the same helicopter with us, and I didn't ask him about Walmart stock at that time. But there I was should. no Walmart. His dad just had <laughs> five and quote five and yeah, dollar stores. Right, I heard that story too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyhow, <clears throat> we we headed to uh, Denang and had guys from Mylock, our launch site at Mylock. Right. F- that was still called FOB three after they closed Case on. Yeah, it was really the launch uh, was part of FOB one. Right. Uh, uh, Major Sincere was worked for Barr. Barr was his boss. Right, Colonel Barr. So anyhow, we get there, and I, I, I told you that story. You know, we got probed on on uh, in December of '67. Yeah, right when uh, you first Christmas, opened when you first Christmas, opened FOB four. Christ, Christmas day. No, Christmas day. Christmas time, and they, uh, in retrospect, which you know. War is always easier to judge in retrospect. They were practicing to see how our alert system worked and everything, which was, you know, we couldn't put mines out because they wouldn't let us put mines out. You know, the, the wire was just nothing more than a few strands of barbed wire, barbed wire, and some concertina thrown in on it. And they, we had no goddamn. Uh, we had that quick reaction force to, you know, run right. a, ran a cops to. We had guys that couldn't run recon and stuff, be in loop people, who were supposed to be the security for the combat. Right. And that night we got hit. Uh, all of us guys who just knew you know, we just got our teams, and we practiced. You know, and I went out there with uh, Kim Boudreau, who was an old SF guy. Sure. I've been around, and that's the first. Highly thing respected. I, yeah, and Boudreau ended up running the launch side at Quan Tree. Yeah. On my, third tour there he uh we both said well where's the secondary fighting positions you know there's your primary you yeah have secondary to you fall, fall back, back if you have yeah, to yeah you have to and you know at least we had to have trip you know trip flares out here sure and all this shit and you know i meant you know i brought that up to uh sergeant major harris who was Harf right harris. harp harris yeah harp harris and he said well don't say anything they'll have you out here doing it and I went, yeah, that's true. They had, we had no support. You right. Know, it was really shitty. But they hit us. At, it was a probing element. They hit us, and uh, they started They started shooting. They shot some mortars off of uh, Marble Mountain. Marble Mountain. And there. just to set the scene, FOB-4 was on the south end of Da Nang. It was east of Highway 1, and it was at the base of Marble Mountain, which were several mountains that just jutted out from nowhere. They're religious sites. And there were religious they're, sites. They had they had uh, Buddhist uh, temples up there. Right. And we couldn't carry, they said you couldn't carry guns up there, you know. They had these goddamn communist, uh, uh, you know, monks. monks Synthesizers. Yeah, monks, monks yeah. up there, you know. And so leading up to August 23rd, 1968, um, they had consolidated the command. We had the command and control element that was at the air base 
They brought all those people in and put them at FOB4. Yeah. Then they had the promotion board and they had people down. And then earlier that day, yeah, all the six FOBs had all their command. command elements that came in for a monthly meeting. So there was extra people there. And they, the NVA and the Viet Cong local sappers, along with their infiltrators, had planned this attack for over a year. And they, they launched it when it was dark. So your early experience from December you felt that on that night of the 23rd, you knew this was a probe, well, just a I, test. I I spent three and a half months of case on. I knew what incoming fire sound like. You know, yeah. it was no. It was, this was not a prodigal deal to me. I, yeah, yeah. As soon as I, you know, I, I heard it, and I said, "Well, hell, we're being mortared," and you know, being a good combat troop, I was. I put the mattress over my head and got on the floor. Yeah, yeah it was a little thin, and. Joe, yeah. Joe Conlon was right next to me. Pigpen was. Yeah. A former Marine, too, like myself. Indeed. He, yeah. <laughs> we were both on the floor. To make, and these two lieutenants had just come in. They'd, they'd been in Vietnam for two weeks. And they were being assigned and waiting to be assigned. And this one goes to the window and I holler down, get your dumb ass out of that window. And then they blew up the enlisted barracks next door. Right. And all that shit. That was the enlisted uh, transient barracks. No, were, we were in transit. It was a permanent party. Okay. It's where the Camo guys were at. Oh, yeah, and Gene Pugh and them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Pugh was. Uh, and Bobby Leathers. And, yeah, they were all in that one there because the when we went outside the camp, Pugh and those guys were out fighting. Yeah. Uh, and it was, a, it was typical of an attack with no leadership on our end right it was all these little battles going on the recon sections down there fighting him i was up in the you know the rimp section up there with the guys right there. and part of that uh, which l led to the lethality of that night was the nva and the recon company because that's where they wanted to hurt us the most they had machine guns set up there were three rows yeah, of the barracks of, of uh, recon special forces and they had three rows of uh, hooches set up, and in each row at the end there was a machine gun on both ends. So they knew that when the attack was launched, the SF men would come out of hooches, and they gunned them down. And the first one was uh, one of the first was uh, Brick. William Brick, yeah, the third. Yeah, I put him in a body bag. Yes, uh, me and, and he came out and got gunned down, as did several others. Well, it was, you know, going back to the original stuff that happened to me, because all I can you know, this is like your story. It, it's, it, well, all combat, it's like you, you mentioned to me, and it's very true. Two people could be sitting together in, in, in a firefight, and after you debrief them, they only saw what they saw. They can't see what I saw. Yeah. You know, so you you get these mixed met People start saying, well, I didn't see that. Well, shit, no, you were up in the other end of the camp. How could you see it? A different bunch of people. But, you know, that kid that went in and was trying to get to uh, write a paper, I think it was a dissertation, right. on the attack, you, know, I, you made contact with him. He had some really good information he got from the NBA side of the house that how many people, because we had a POW camp next to us. Right north of FOB4, yes. and they had planned to go in to breach it to get more troops but to they support did. them. They went in there, but the problem was they couldn't get through their wire. You know, they had to wire to, and then to the, keep people in. And then one of the men called in an airstrike from uh, one of the Cobra gunships that showed up and killed a lot of them in the wire. Well, they had, uh, that was the crazy thing about it. They had these damn gunships running over us, and we're running all over the camp, you know, and our guys in their underwear and yeah. and shit like that. And the only reason I, I had my tagger fatigue pants, because I'd been in case on you never, you know, yeah, ready to go in. <laughs> The trench line, and I had, had since I give Spider my my Swedish, Swedish K. K for he could go to, be, do go to the uh, downtown down to, house twenty two. Uh, I won't break his cover story for command sergeant major, but uh, <laughs> he he didn't he didn't go down there on a on a mission. He did not. <laughs> he went down there. A little self gratification with yeah, the indeed. young ladies <laughs> and stuff down there. But getting back to FOB four, Sergeant. <laughs> so anyhow, it's just like it said in the book. Uh, luckily, Conlon was on a recon team, at, uh, right? And he had his 
car 15 and grenades and stuff the two lieutenants remember the old deal you go into a no train yep. they give you those damn carbines right m2 carbines they still had their m2s they had their m2s and they had no ammo no <laughs> so they're in, they're in there and they're looking at me and 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 spider had been in there first of course and he took off on me and we went me and conlon and of course i knew conlon for years and he was uh, in the marine corps too so we had that f- facility they showed an outside movie there always that mm-hmm. night. and they they showed this movie that i'll never forget it remember the truman capote book in cold blood indeed that they showed them the movie. night of the attack the night of the attack yeah so in cold blood and i i'd never been a drinker as you as you know yeah no and uh so anyway, I I I want to get some sleep, man, because I've been up flying all day and sure. all this shit. And Spider with the party, and uh, Conlon was with me. He he he, you know he, we sitting there and bullshitted in in the room and went to bed, and I always slept with a pistol under him pillow anyhow. So when this all this shit happened, and I you know the zapper comes down the hallway and and you know. With a pistol at night, it's a hey you roster, you know. Right, and you're not at that time. You weren't really thrilled about your no, pistol I'm a, skills. I, I you're a car fifteen a, guy. I am a car fifteen. Fully yeah, you automatic. and me both. Fully automatic. <laughs> you get gives up to all my goddamn marksmanship skills. Yeah. So I just shot. I just shot at his goddamn crotch area and yeah. hit, hit him in the head. <laughs> and he. Fell out, he fell out the door, I, which I didn't know because I got blown back into the room, and I had a concussion. My nose is bleeding, my yeah. brain and the ears and everything. And I told uh, uh, I told the one lieutenant it wasn't hit, it wasn't hurt. The other guy had a big chunk out of his arm, a piece of shrapnel came through and hit him from the explosion in the next barracks. And barracks are blown up all around us. There's far fight down in the talk area, and you know. But the only thing that saved us was there. They started shooting flares off the Marines on the other side, and right. Third Amtrak on the other side. They were being probed too, right. And they started shooting off eighty-one millimeter flares, and they and that kind of light. Lit. But the bad thing was we're all running around him, you know, looking like zappers. And uh, if I I told I told uh, Joe I says. Man, I only couldn't. You know, we're not going to die in this hooch. So we can, let's get out and, and do it. So, we went next door where the building had been blown up. It's all blown up. You know, sh- shit. There, guys were wounded. There were two guys laying in their in their underwear. Didn't have any stuff. And I told Joe, I said, "Well, you got the car 15 and stuff. Take this." Well, then. One of them was named Hoffman. He was a radio operator. And right. I knew him when I was at four. And he says, and he saw me, and he says, uh, Bob Scully's laying over here, two hooches way wounded. And Bob Scully is one of our outstanding medics yeah, with case on FOB3. He was a senior medic. Then, senior yeah, medic, okay, yeah. yeah. And uh, a living legend as far as, you know, in special forces. Absolutely. And, and me and Bob have been friends for years. So I says, okay, I'll go over there and get Scully. Come back, Joe, yeah. and help me. So he said, well, once you come with me, then we'll go. And I says, I'm, this is not a debate in society. Get your ass, get these guys down. And he said, okay. So anyhow, I went over there, and a zapper come around the building, and, and I shot him. Right. With and, your forty-five. Yeah, with my forty. He didn't yeah. have any weapon. All he had was grenades hanging all over him, those Chicom grenades. Right. And he had a satchel charge. They, they was he just well, wearing a loincloth? He had the uh, yeah the band that across it is bandetta. It said, "We come to die," and, and they did. Me, and beat me. Yeah, we. Yeah. Made, you know, we killed over seventy-five of them. And, uh, wow. But anyhow, I, I shot him, and I was looking for his weapon. I thought he had an AK, and at least I'd have a goddamn gun. Yeah, yeah. And the first thing that hit me, Warner was Goddell's son. <laughs> <laughs> of all the dumb things to think of. <laughs> so anyhow, he didn't have it. All he had was, yeah, I guess that's the reason he didn't. Huh. He probably trying to deed him out of the camp. So <laughs> shot him. I, I I heard the screaming, and, and over by the uh, latrine area was somebody laying there screaming, and it was Scully. And 
there was another body over here, and it was another medic who was with him, with Scully. They killed him. And so I, I says, shit, all this flares coming down, you know, all these buildings blowing, I started crawling out there to him. And Scully, I says, I'm coming, Bob, I'll, I'll be there. And he says, no, 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 they're just using me as bait. And uh, that's when the zapper was behind the generator, the big generator. Right. He raised up from the generator and started shooting at me. And uh, he was about to good a shot with his AK as I was with a 45. So, so luckily I survived it. And the only thing that saved me, Conlon come back because he had dropped those guys off with that lieutenant in the Jeep. Right. Yeah, uh, it was uh, it was driving the jeep. I think it was Blankenship. Blankenship. It was Lieutenant picking, Blankenship. Yeah, we're picking up people. Yeah, you know, under all this cr stuff, he was out driving the jeep, picking up wounded, and he saw he pinned the zapper down. Joe did. Is that right? Yeah. So I told him I said, "Well, keep him down." And he says, "He says, okay, I'll keep him down." Well, just then, the asshole stands up behind the guy and throws a hand grenade at us. And I told my I told myself over Scully, and we both got shrapnel on our legs, uh, hitting oh, our man. legs again. <clears throat> so Colin's shooting at him, and he's shooting more generator, and he is him. So I just started firing. I hit him right in the jaw, and spun him around, and Colin hit him, and he fell down. And so I we got. And then Henderson, Doc Henderson, Roscoe Henderson. Right. These guys are all slept in the same barracks together, and all the medics did. And you know Howie Fetter, don't you? Only by name. Yeah, Howie was there too. He was an FOB4 medic, and he, he was a case on with me. Uh, uh, anyhow, he came crawling. They'd all been together, and they couldn't get out to Scully because they kept shooting at him every time. They all they had the was, bait, the, yeah, the, the bait. whole bait and factor. And they had they had their M2 medical things. They have no weapons. Yeah. Typical SF medics, man. You know, God damn it, we're, you know. <laughs> So we got Scully, we took, I said, God, we got to carry him across here. And Joe says, what are we going to, Joe says, I, why don't we take the door off when the hooches were blown up? So we went over and got the door, and we put him on the door. And Scully, a big kid. You know, oh, yeah. Guy. And uh, he was in the John Wayne movie, you know, the Green Berets. He was the medic on, the, on that deal. I heard that. Yeah, so anyhow, we put him on the damn thing, and he's screaming. So I got my hand over his mouth, and it, like we are given our position away with all this shit happening, went to bullshit. So I, we're starting to carry him. Henry, Henderson and me are carrying him, and Joe's the point man on the deal. Right. You know, you know. And you're heading to the dispensary. We, no, we're going to the Jeep. Joe had the Jeep weight. Oh, okay. Had the yeah, Jeep weight. And we was only like, you know, 20 meters away. But hell, under all, fire, it makes it a lot shit, longer. All they're shooting off a of Marble Mountain at us. Yeah. And all that crap, and mortar rounds coming in. And, you know, it was, it was something out of a John Wayne movie. Indeed. And, and it's, so we got them to the, we come around the corner, and two sappers came around the corner of this building. So I got my 45 laying on the, on the, on the, on door. the door litter, and, and Joe's got his AK. So I'm Car fumbling, and we drop, and we drop Scully. <laughs> oh no! And you got that open head wound. I yeah. can see gray matter. Yeah. Yeah. And I wouldn't give my, you know, he had morphine, but they're always saying don't give morphine to a head wound. Right. Deal. You know, like all right. So I placed the pistol up, and we started shooting at him. We hit one of them, and they took off. You know, we didn't hit him bad enough. He left. But then I found out later. Uh, he, he, we hit him through the hand. He lost. He lost his hand. But Joe probably hit him. He hit him through the goddamn car. At him. Right. So we got to the jeep, and put Scully on the jeep, and Holland and them were still in it. The, the other guys we picked up out of the barracks. Right. And so there, the guy driving the jeep says, "Do you need to go with it with me?" And I said, "No." And I, he says, and Henderson said, are you sure? And and I said, why? He said, he said God, you're covered with blood. You're, you're all hit. And I was running off adrenaline, you know. It was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I knew I'd been hit, but it was like, man. Yeah, shrapnel. Yeah. It wasn't an AK round, you know. So, no. So w 
we did we started back and I said well let's let's go back to the uh, they had the officers barracks there and it had been blown up too and it, it had been blown up too so we head back there and come around the, come around the corner of that and this guy jumps out of the out of the debris of the blown up enlisted barracks right yeah and I looked and he was wearing the breech cloth and stuff it was in zapper and uh somebody hollered in Berg says the bad guy out there don't watch yourself watch yourself there's a bad guy out there and it was uh, <clears throat> and yeah, I was one of the it was uh, one of the uh, uh radio operators was still in the in the uh, <coughs> in the debris yeah. and every time he moved this guy would shoot at him well he jumped up and I emptied my 45 at him and Conlon was behind me, and he couldn't get a shot at him because I was. You're in the way. I'm in the way, but I hit him twice with 45, and and knocked him down, and uh, hit him through the throat and, and uh, the arm and the leg. A <laughs> good shot pattern. <laughs> so, anyhow, he he was laid there, dying, you know. And I, Conlon, said, "I'm going to finish." I said, "Not let him suffer," you know. <laughs> so. We picked, got the met, uh, got the guy out from there. He said, "Well, you saved my life." And I said, "We ain't got time to do in this yet." <laughs> uh, so I picked up the, his AK, this guy's AK, and I says, "Shit, now I got, you know, got a got weapon. A and yeah, this pistol could go." So I give the guy, the guy pulled out, I said, give him my forty-five, and said, yeah. "I'd come back and get it next day." And uh, so I had this AK. And I come around the building, and Joe was in front of me. Thank God! And somebody hollered. Are you Americans? Are you Americans? And and Joe says, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, well, I almost shot you. I seen that guy with the AK. Oh. <laughs> it was Colonel Smith and Sergeant Major Stratton from FOB two. Two. Right. They were up there for that board. That, for the that, board, they hung out yeah, for the night. Yeah, they hung out there to party. Oh my God. And they had two wounded guys with them. Yeah. And they, you know, they were. Confused like most colonels are, and uh, <laughs> he looked looked at me and he says, he says, who's in charge of this? And everybody pointed their finger at me, and I says, I said, well, you can't stay here, Colonel. I said, you're in a field of fire here, and all this shit's happening. He said, well, what's your suggestion? I said, I'm going to move you over to this latrine, and we can secure the latrine. I got a medic with me, with Henderson. He had his yeah, aid, yeah. aid bag, and we'll take care of these guys here. And he said, well, that sounds like a good idea. And I oh, said, well, no fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, sir. <laughs> sir, by your leave, sir. So anyhow, <laughs> moved moved these guys. One of them was ambulatory and the other one wasn't. The other guy was all fucked up, man. He'd been blown up in the building. Oh. And I had splinters, you know, all oh, yeah. up from the wood and shit. So we drug him over there and Henderson was there and taking care of him. So I looked at Conlon and I said, well, let's see if we can find some more people. We'll move them back here and this will be a tree, triage. Right. Area. And uh, Smith Smith says, well, watch yourself walking around with that AK. And I says, yeah, yeah, I, I got a little paranoid then, you know. So yeah, yeah. Might shoot me with it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyhow, we, we policed up a couple other people and brought them back there and – then we it was starting to get dawn. By that and, time, by that time, and the sun was coming, and shit still going on. Yeah, this is after to, a couple of hours. Oh, three hours, at least. Yeah, just constant shit. Yeah, and then the POW camps being hit, and all that shit's happening over there. Gunships running all over, and I said, "Oh, hope they just start shooting at us." And Larry Trimble's up on top, up on top of, of, them, of and Marble knocked, Mountain, got knocked the mortar out. He knocked the mortar yeah. out. Yeah. He saved a lot of lives by doing that. Absolutely. And the Marines had him over to the Amtrak, had the club. Sure. Because he had saved that 106 crew who was up there. He had, right. He knocked out those guns. They had a big part. I said, God damn, the Marine Corps off has Army guys come to their club. This must have been a really big deal. Well, you know what had happened, too, uh, what was the final part of that was they, uh, the next day they went down and policed up who they killed, and there was a, uh, the NVA had a ruck. And in the ruck was more planned to attack the Marine the following day yeah, or day. And so 
the king bee came up and took out the one zero to go down. Yeah. And they handed it off, and the, they were able to notify the Marines about the a follow-up attack. Yeah, he took the ruck with him. Yeah. Yeah, and then they didn't. Because Larry stayed up on the mountain. Well, the rest of the little people wanted to leave. Yeah, they worked out. They started down the mountain, and the NVA was still up there and started shooting, and they decided to come back with Larry. Well, and Larry told us, don't go, if yeah. you go down, you might run into the NVA. Yeah, yeah. They went down, they ran into the NVA. NBA. But at least they, they took out the mortar. Oh, yeah. The, the NVA mortar, which well, saved the lives of the camp. It was, uh, you know, we we got the people over that have been wounded and stuff over to the dispensary, and it was a madhouse, you know. Right. Ever. It told the truth of one doctor we had, mm -hmm. he'd been wounded too. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he was in there treating people. And all the medics were, you know, all, most of them, you know, had shrapnel and stuff. Sure. There. And there was that lieutenant was at the back door, the one, you know, with the, with, I can't think of his name. I didn't know him. He's sitting there with his car 15. Oh, sitting Travis there, Mills. Travis Mills. He's sitting there in a chair, and there's blood all over him. And Travis and, Mills had been shot five times. Five times. Earlier and, in the evening. Yeah, and he was guarding the back door. He came the, in. The, they the did the a triage. He said, you're not going to die. Mm -hmm. Here, guard the back door. Yeah, he guard the back and door. And he sat there, but it, he, he saw sitting, him. He was sitting in a chair <laughs> at the back door, yeah. just covered with blood. The, then I got to, and Howie Fetter was in there doing a, a trach on a Vietnamese guy. Got mm -hmm. killed, and I went over there, and I, and at, then I, I le left, and I says, I told, I told uh, Conlon, I says, well, let's go out and see if we can, you know, ha yeah. help some more. That's when I run into Spider. He came <laughs> asshole. Back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he hijacked the goddamn three-quarter ton <laughs> truck and mm -hmm. got a bunch of guys together and came back. Yeah. And, uh. They came in, and he, he's out there by my, my Pat, Pat. Hey, I come up to him, and he looks at me, and he says, God damn it, you look bad. And I said, where's my goddamn Swedish cave? Well, and also, I think, yeah, uh, so we can move on with the story, but before we do, there's two things. One, at one point, they came to you and said, you should be treated for your wounds oh, here. Oh, they twice, and you said, no, I'll go somewhere else because there are so many wounded well, they, people. What happened was uh, there was a Navy co uh, corpsman. He came in. He came down from right. the – there was a Naval hospital down the road. Yes, sir. That's, of course, the Marine Corps gets all their goddamn medical care from the yeah. Navy, their corpsmen. Or, sure. They wear Marine Corps uniforms, and they're FMF corpsmen. <clears throat> so anyhow – those guys were coming down like the guy you you know. The, right, Harry. Uh, yeah, Harry from California, isn't he? Yes, Chapter 78, yeah. SFA Chapter. He uh, he was down there. With he, these guys were transporting, you know, wounded back and forth to the field hospital. All, all while under enemy fire. Uh, oh, yeah. We were yeah. still, hell, we were killing zappers in the morning, you know, that two ran into the shit house and right. blew themselves up. So I'm standing there, I got all that, and they thought I was— be a medevac next thing i know i'm on the jeep <laughs> going down to the damn hospital and spiders looking for me still because we were you know we got shot at and we were buying a black label beer can right uh, i remember that. yeah yeah they were shooting at us off the marble over Mount. marble mountain Both yeah rounds going into the beer and it's coming down on us <laughs> and then anyhow i got down there and they of course these you know they had all these cash the marines are Taking shit, and then we had people on the, the Marines on the other side were in contact. There was, you know, there were uh, uh, a battalion of VC and NBA that were hit. In total, them. yeah. yeah hitting hit all them. the different bases at yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. over 300. So, in order for us to move on with our sawcast version of the story, 46 years later, um, you received an award and decoration for that night, which was. <laughs> Uh, distinguished Service Cross. Indeed, it was well earned. Only, well, I had to at least get that. Only because the enlisted men I served with that night uh, went out of mission. Spider Parks and Joe Conlon and and uh, Dickie Bird Crawford. Right. And a med another medic from FOB three. Uh, another medic, a chase medic from FOB three. Uh, I was at the reunion when, and uh, they asked me, you know, do you ever get your decoration from? From and FOB I, Ford. And I says, yeah, I got two Purple Hearts. <laughs> 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 yeah. And uh, they were on this mission, mostly led by Spider, to uh, give me a new, and Crawford having the contacts that right. he had developed. Uh, 
he knew the right way to put in for all this shit. You know, and they worked with Neil Thorne too. Who, Neil, who was Neil, a, who Neil worked was with a ghost, ghost writer for a lot. Ray Indeed. wrote up my decoration. Right, Ray but, Califel. And Ray Califel and Colonel Barr signed off on it all. And being a full colonel, that didn't hurt. No. And I had, uh, I had uh, five eyewitness statements. So that is an award well earned. So this is August 68. Now you've been in country just about eight months. And uh, two months later, you were you were a key participant in yet another major battle where a nine-man recon team on October 5th, 1968, gets inserted into a target. There's an inexperienced team leader who will remain nameless. He goes in, and the second helicopter comes in with Lynn Black, who had a previous tour of duty with the 173rd. And um, this was his first mission with ST Alabama. He was a radio operator. And he was the radio operator. And they had a couple in-country practice missions where the previous one, Zero, Tim Schaaf, yeah, sure. who was experienced, highly respected, but the other sergeant had more rank. He's the team leader. Bottom line, they get into a target. Lynn Black says we should leave. They saw an NVA flag, which indicates right. at least a battalion. Or regiment. What's the, what's the, they're a regiment, it's like the Marine Corps, with their bata- their brigades or regiments. This is regular army talk. What does that mean in terms of body count? Three thousand. <clears throat> well, it does. One of the things that an, an NBA division consisted of eight thousand. You know, and they, were, the NBA general and, told and, Lynn they had ten. So yeah, would well, be they a could have been reinforced, right? Too. But the uh, you know, like the Marine Corps, uh, a, a regiment in the Marine Corps is uh, is uh, 6,000. So, so the point is, when they landed, they thought it was at least 3,000 enemy troops. Yeah. Lynn said we should leave. The inexperienced sergeant says no. Worse, he ran him down a trail, walked yeah. him into an ambush. He was killed. A good point man was killed immediately. Yeah. Another indiz was wounded. They have a firefight. So this is, they were inserted Lynn was first thing too. in the morning. Yeah, he was wounded a little bit later with a hand grenade that knocked yeah, him out, tore up his no. clothes. And um, and I'm above them flying Covey. So when you get there, you and Spider take turns because they're in an well, all day battle. we were working so much tack air. That's why. Yeah. And so there are some key moments for you during that battle. When you're in the air, you're seeing what's going on on the ground. You have bad weather. You also coming get smoke in. with all the ordnance. And, and there and was I, a couple and, of moments you had there. And nightfall's coming too. Well, the, this is after a day of battle when at, at oh. key points where the team was on the ground, they killed so many NVA that they were stacking up the dead bodies and firing at the next wave attack behind well, the a only, wall of dead bodies. I, to this day, I think the only reason it had, uh, they didn't kill them was they were trying to draw helicopters in to shoot them down. Think so for more oh, yeah. for the bait factor. Oh yeah, they could have killed those. And guys. we had the, the classic example of a of a king bee that came in for a resupply. Yeah, it got shot. And it made it. They over said the pop the smoke, and the NVA popped the same smoke that Lynn Black. Yeah, well, popped. they didn't identify the old process. Right. You know, always identify. Well, they both popped the same color. They guessed at that. Anyway, they lost the king bee. Yeah, well, they lost the king bee, a resupply king bee, and then we couldn't. We we tried to get support from the king bees to come and pick the team up we had no gun in gun support until ju- uh, judge and executioner, executioner sure. came up and they saved the day because we were down to you know these guys were just fighting and they had at least two sorties that day right well they had they were flying so low that they had tree limbs hanging off their struts no yeah wow so this is the judge and executioner from the 176, yeah, the Muskets. W- they lived with us. They lived I'd, with us at FOB1. And they also lived with us. The uh, first time I met those guys who were at was Cam, over at Cam, Cam Duck. Duck. Sure. Yeah, they stayed a month with us up there. And they were just amazing. Oh, Schiffer hot. They, they, they had a siren on the <laughs> helicopter, and they pulled a siren when they come in on gun runs. For run, a gun run. Gun runs. Uh, now, the thing was, on that whole on the whole deal was if the Air Force hadn't committed to Jolly Greens, right, that we would have never got those guys. No, no. Tell you the truth, 
I've become very pessimistic at the when we we lost the engine and stuff. We, we weren't going to get them. So out explain there. about your personal loss of an engine. That's one of the points I wanted to get to. You've been on the scene. I forget now how many times you and Spider rotated we leap, back and forth. We were leapfrogging, getting right. refueled, and getting more uh, rockets. So during your second or third refuel, you There's and the second and, one, yeah. Okay, and, and Spider was getting ready to go back, but they had that F four almost hit them. Right. And they'd had the rocket pods actually ripped off at the goddamn crash. And so and the what, wings were all wobbled. And Spider, like you, were you two were both in O2 Cessnas. Yeah. It's a push pull aircraft. Right. Observation aircraft yeah, it's, by design. It, it's it's uh, 65, 35, front engine, 35 power, and the rear end is 60. Okay. Uh, and so, but the key point was you observed. An, an F four almost collide with. Oh it. yeah! And the pro, well, the prop wash from that aircraft was so severe that it knocked off the uh, pods that were on yeah, the well, O two. Yeah, they caught the exhaust of that F four. Right. Okay. And that's what because he saw them and tried to evade them, and of course the slow flying. Yeah. O two and a guy didn't jet mock jet. At, at the most, it could and do maybe a hundred miles. A, and he yeah. just made a gun run, so he was in you know yeah get out of the four at the burners. Up. Yeah, because they were shooting 12.7. So you observed that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Shit, I thought, and then how soon I thought after that? What's the first thing that came to my mind? God damn it, I'm going to be the only cover writer. Because <laughs> by that time, both you and Spider had been promoted to a cover writer. And a cover writer I, in our a, tactical I, situation. I recruited Spider. Indeed. But yep. the point is, to the unique SOG side of this story, was that when we had Air Force pilots, they would fly, but we had experienced one zeros. That oh, would that be was, the Covey Rider. As you know, that was the Well, I know, but for our viewers, yeah, the explain the why does a rider. Yeah, well, the prerequisite was that you had ground time Indeed. And, as a leader, and you understood tactical air support and movement of troops on the ground to help them evade and, and be able to get to LZs. Because our, our, our mission was a team on the ground. Where the pilot's mission was the ordnance and the aircraft that came to sure. support it. So our whole mission, me and Spider and Dallas Longstreet and you know John Placer, and right? All, all the guys who flew Covey in in Vietnam. The leader, Don Walton, Pappy Webb. Yeah, Walton took my place. Yeah, right. I, I recruited him too, and he didn't want to do it, but. <laughs> yeah, he was my one zero. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> he just didn't want the responsibility. He wanted to run, t he, you know, running yeah. was okay. But he saw what me and Spider went through. You know, we couldn't sleep at night and shit after going out and, you know, getting in that goddamn plane and starting all over again. Oh, yeah. And uh, But anyhow, uh, yeah, there was a lot of close calls that night. And, the, and, the, and the, you know, the big thing was this was a true inner service uh, activity absolutely and the only thing we didn't have uh, we had marine corps gunships come out even sure we had scarface there scarface came out uh the lead helicopter pilot that got uh lynn out finally got them out the jolly green giant it was a coast guard pilot it was an exchange oh that's right guy. i forgot about that he was a coast guard pilot exchange program he, and this is he after he flowed air rescue for the helicopter for the and coast he, guard yeah coast guard and he volunteered to to the, the go into uh, the Jolly Greens. And again, yeah. that Jolly Green rescue Lynn after another Jolly Green was oh, shot, down. shot down. The King Bee was shot down. And, well, we had two And King, they had two survivors. We had two King Bee shot down. Right. And we had two survivors off the down yeah. uh, Jolly Ca Green. Casper, the PG. Right. And uh, the co pilot. The co pilot. And so near the end of the day, this Jolly Green comes in and hovers. And was able to pull the team out. Well, the first one that came in, the one that got shot down. Yeah, they they lowered the jungle penetrator. You know that's how they. Right, they sure. don't land. They penetrate because they couldn't they're, land there. Well, their mission is down pilots. Right. We became. They never had supported the SOG team. Just the, oh, just, that one the first time they did they that ever did it. In, no. And uh, Ashall and F. Oh, I didn't yeah, realize that. Yeah, first time they'd ever done it. And they have to commit to do it. And they have a, they, uh, I found this out later because me and Spider went up there, you know. They sure. They us up there to Da Nang. To, to Da Nang, yeah. Yeah, to the, uh, their uh, SOS unit. The, and their thing is once they're committed, they'll fly to every aircraft shot down or they pick them up. 
it's you know good these guys are the best that are well and the model for the jolly green giants that others yeah. may live yeah and there and are good men that have died living well, up to that well they got model. armor plating on the bottom right of it and they don't have a door gunner they had the same thing they the, they have a mechanic it's called a mechanic which is their crew chief right uh-huh. and he's got and M16 with a 30 round magazine too. Yeah. And they finally put mini guns on them later on. Oh sure. And they had a PJ, and every helicopter had a PJ paramedic, right. uh, or paratroopers. And, outstanding troops. Yeah. And I told you about Casper he killed yeah. himself later on, committed suicide. But uh, yeah, he went to you know, as we know, some people can handle. But even there, that. like the armor planning, uh, Lynn talked about how when they were coming out. They could felt the, the uh, RPGs hitting the bottom and giving the helicopter surges. Well, the first one, the one that got oh. shot down, yeah, I'd put it in. We'd run gun runs, everything, you know, because they were surrounded. I was, oh yeah. Com- I mean, we were taking twelve point five. You know, it was it was chaotic at the best. And the, he went in and lowered the jungle penetrator, and Lynn was and Lynn had taken over the team. He was a one two. Right. The, you know the one what and the other American uh, was, froze on him for the whole day. Just he prayed yeah, a lot. He yeah. didn't fire one his, round. His, his father was a general, general yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. We and know. Lynn saved that team. I mean, uh, Lynn and Cowboy. Yeah, and you Cow- know who else was? Oh, out I'll tell there? you something about Cowboy though. And they had Doty. I had to get him there. off the damn radio. Was oh, that right? Yeah, God, he got on the radio and Lynn started taking over, and he's talking to me and he kept saying mandolin, mandolin. We don't die. We don't die. <laughs> <laughs> My code name is Mandolin. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, you know, I, finally I said, Cowboy, God dang it. I got enough to worry about. We're going to get you out. And, and it was that helicopter, that Jolly Green was hovering there. And all of a sudden, I seen it start taking hits. And, uh, it was, and the engine, well, the flames started coming out of it. No. Yeah, and he tried to break off to get away. Right. You know, and he just curved and he hit a tree and stuff and he turned upside down and crashed into the jungle. And I'll never forget this Greg Hartness, I was with him. He went, oh, you know, we're all. Oh, oh of course. Oh, shit. And he, you're the, viewing such tragedy. And not only that, the team's done. There's no yeah. way we're going to get these guys out of if here. If we lost a Jolly, Jolly Green. Jolly Green. And the thing was, there was another one right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one with the Coast Guard pilot. Sure. Yeah. And they had another one that had been shot up bad that well, had to leave. Well, he took 27 hits, and he went in and landed at the 101st outpost at uh, Eagle's Nest. Eagle's Nest, yeah. Yeah, he, he could make it back there. So anyways, and you I, survived that day. And this is one of your – two days later, we were on the ground engaged yeah. for four hours. But yeah. compared to what Lynn Black went oh, through – Oh, you were in the world shit, too. Though. We were a little bit yeah. deep, but you and Spider were there – Directed us, got us through it all, yeah. and uh, I'm here today thanks to you and the Air Force and everybody else, you know. Yeah, it was a team affair. You know, that's one thing about SOG. I, th- I always said that uh, SOG was an I- instrumental in SOCOM because we've always had this thing about, you know, the Marine Corps, we can do our own thing. The Army, we can do our Of course, the Army, we, we rely on the Air Force because they're our tactical air sure. and stuff and transport. There's always been this, there's never been this, uh, you know, this this closeness of services that we work together. And SOG was because it was a cross-the-service outfit. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I mean, we use Marine Air. We well, use, back at base, there would be the inter-service rivalry. The Air Force yeah. would be on the Army, yeah. and we would all insult the Marine Corps. Yeah. But when we went across the fence... It was all business. Well, there was like was a, us versus you know that famous story when I, we were up at FOB four. We went down there to get that Swift boats. Oh yeah, sure. And went into uh, at Chulai, <laughs> went in there to because we were going to do Swift boat operations, right? God, there wasn't enough shit. Now they're going to do <laughs> Swift boat operations. So we anyhow walked by this this barracks. Me and Sp- me and Spider and and uh, this sign is on his. Go Navy, beat Army. It was just before Get the Army. Get close to the Army Navy game. Yeah, Army Navy game. And this guy was out throwing the football. To yeah. the, a to Navy, a to Navy to officer. Yeah, and this guy was a was a second class clerk. Uh, you know, Navy words what they are. Navy, 
on this stuff. And I looked at this guy, and I, his, Spider's a Texan, of course. Yeah, of course. And I says, does that guy live for me or do you? And Spider says, God damn it, that's Roger Stallback. Yeah, in July. <laughs> in July. <laughs> Throwing a football. And he went to the academy, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And he volunteered to go to Nam. He he was a he was the uh, quartermaster officer there right. in July. So we, I says, God damn it, me and Spider are both football players like of course. you. You know, I says, uh, you were you were survivors of the football games at FB One. Yeah, that's one. right. We're going to <laughs> we're, we're me and me and me and uh, Ed uh, Ed and the carrot always oh, getting a fight every goddamn. Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, we bro- we almost broke John Walton's ankle and they made us quit. That was the most severe in- injury was a foot injury from the football game. game. <laughs> so, so anyhow, he had big feet, man. Oh yeah, God, he had big hands too. Yeah. He, he went over and he says, uh, he was a lieutenant JG. He says, uh, Lieutenant, I says, are you Roger Stovak? And he says, yeah. And he says, what are you guys? He said, well, he's a, he's a typical spider. He says. I'd like to tell you, sir, but we'd have to kill you. <laughs> and he started laughing. He said, are you Marines? <laughs> said, no, we're Special Forces. And he says, oh, yeah, okay. And Spider says, hey, will you throw the ball to us? So we had to catch the ball. Me and him from yeah, you had some good passes. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah. And from Stallback. It was, it was funny, though. You, you go in, you know, I got to be good friends with Maggie Ray. Oh, of course. Because yeah. she was back over there. But let me get back to Roger for a second because we had a little mention in On the Ground yeah, with you, Roger. Yeah, didn't you call him up? And I talked talk to, to him. him, yeah. And uh, we talked about it. He didn't remember specifics, but he said, yeah, I had football there. We passed with anybody who would yeah. come by. <laughs> and, yeah, we were referring. Yeah. And, uh, and Spider was a quarterback. You know, God, he could throw a oh, ball. He could, oh, yeah. And he pitched on our baseball team, you know. Yeah, and he pitched on our A-company softball team. Yeah. We were on defeat that yeah. year. Yeah, we beat every team. We even went and played the prisons, Walpole Prison and all of them, and held spider posts. Well, this is one of those little sidebars I really enjoyed because <laughs> you you turned to him and you said, someday I'll tell my children and grandchildren I tossed around the football with a Heisman Trophy winner. And Roger Stallback responded, the real heroes in Vietnam are Special Forces troops such as you and your friends. And I look forward to someday telling my children, I threw passes to a U.S. Army Special Forces soldier. Yeah, yeah that was so yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, one of those little moments yeah, in time, yeah, you know. Yeah. It was, and it was so. It, the first thing out of Spider's mouth, I'm from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't tell me. And, he, and did stall back. So well, I won't hold that against you. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't tell me he's part Comanche. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. God, his father died in prison. Yeah. Yeah, one I of those did. stories. But he was—he uh, speaks like seven or eight languages. God, now. I told you when we were up there in Rose's Medal of Honor thing. Yeah, those two hookers come in, <laughs> and, yeah. they, and they were both Ukrainian, right? <laughs> of course. And they're talking back, and I'm—I'm I'm there with uh, with Beaver McCann yeah. and his wife, his wife's Ty, yeah. and I, yes, and Eddie Han and, and their boy, and it's, and Spider's standing there looking at them, and they're chatting back and forth, and Spider jumps right in with him, starts speaking Russian to him. Yeah, uh, I looked at him like, uh, and, they, went, and yeah. those SF guys from the from the uh, from the seventh group that were there, his escort guys. Yes, uh, they were all watching, and they they <laughs> moved up towards them. And this one master started to come back and said, "What'd you say to him?" And Spider says, "Got to learn the languages." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spider man, he's an intellectual. Well, you got a PhD. He did. On top of that. So let's get back to Pat Watkins the first. So your tour of duty ends, your first tour of duty, you survive it. You go back to 10th Group, Special Forces Group, where you and I uh, reconnected a little bit later in 1969 for a few months. And I went back to Vietnam yeah. in October. Then what did you do? From 10th Group, you went to where? Because 10th well, Group was just, you had parades and uh, volu- some training. Yeah, I volunteered to go. I went down to see Mrs. A like you did. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, me and Joel Alderman uh-huh. and Fred Zabrakowski. Fred went down? Yeah, he had to. And this is after it, he'd earned the Medal of Honor. He wanted to go back to Nam. You know Fred. Oh, of course. And 
course. Mrs. Well, I met Fred after the war. I met oh, okay. Him on the phone. We talked over the phone oh, several okay. times. Yeah, you being from New Jersey, you can understand. We're that. both from Trenton. Yeah. He's one of five Trenton, six Trentonians that served in SOG. It's, yeah, I know you. Uh, uh, that is funny. Uh, I know. You're a quarterback. Just, you guys are both quarterbacks. My high school quarterback, quarterback. KIA, February 69 yeah. in, in uh, Cambodia. Yeah, I, I, and what it, Krosky. what it was, we I wanted to go to Okinawa. Mm -hmm. I want to get out of anything that was stateside and there wasn't a war going on and being screwed with all, all the time. And you did a lot of parades, and I remember you were so was, unhappy I, with parade I, I, and I funerals. Had, you had one I had funeral? the colors, and I had funeral details. I, I planted more pilgrims and... <laughs> <laughs> in Massachusetts and New Hampshire and Vermont. Hell, we pilgrims. were we were burying this this retired <clears throat> Colonel World War II guy on a hillside in Vermont up by Stoll, up by the ski sure. area. Yeah, yeah. Ski area. And it was been snowing and it was cold and, and we had a we took a chaplain with Methodist chaplain was and he pissed him on all the way up there because he was they taking him out of the service, and he's getting a parish in, New, in North Dakota. <laughs> and he was a captain, you know, in the, in the Army, and he was living the good life. His wife lived in officer's quarters and stuff. So anyhow, we were up there, and I'll never forget this. I had I, my uh, uh, radio operate my radio op my medic, uh, Pete Honberg, he was a from Boston, right? He had two silver stars. He was he was with Clyde when Clyde got DSC. That's the reason I. Yeah. So anyhow, moving right along. Yeah. So anyhow, and, and hell of a goddamn medic, and we got the we're on the side and we they got plywood down, you know, for sure. the grave graveside, and we got jump boots on, you know, those damn things are not good for anything braids, you know. The guy, no. And he's standing there, and next thing he does, he slips and goes under the coffin into, no. into the gravesite. <laughs> and the wife's out there, and she's, you know, she's my age now. Yeah. And she's out there, and she starts wailing. And this young priest did, was doing the, you know, the, the, the ceremony at the, at the gravesite, and he was trying to keep a straight face. <laughs> All he was talking to me, he, he was going to go skiing that afternoon and stole and wanted to get yeah, this yeah. over with. And... And we're over trying to figure out how to get Pete out of the graves. Oh, my God. So anyhow, he pulled him. He's got mud all over him and shit. And <laughs> pulled him out. And then the guy had the fire squad, too. You know, we had to. Right. And, and we always put them out of sight. Yeah. And what we did, we, we had this thing. We'd take rounds. It wasn't the ones we used to go. And we'd brass them and put them inside the flag. Sure. To present it to the so-so. Yeah. So, so, I mean, so. And, you know, you're trying to... It would be seven seven shell casings or seven rounds? Uh, you have seven volleys. Right. Yeah. And we'd give seven rounds in there. But they, they were pretty... We did it before we left. We right. We took some brass and shined it up. And sure. Part of the ceremony. So anyhow, <laughs> you get him out of there, and all this family and everybody's around. His wife's just wailing. Ooh. Oh, God. And I said, oh, God, I'm going to hear about this when I get back to Devon. And the funeral director... He was a good guy too. We went to the funeral home the night before. We stayed there overnight, and uh, he was doing an alt. He was doing a, 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 a altar bomb. call. He was bombing guy in the basement down in the oh, thing. No. He said, "You guys want to come down here?" And I said, "No, I've seen enough dead bodies." <laughs> yeah, and, uh, he and that's said, only your first tour. Yeah, and he says, "Well, you don't want to see the all I have seen." So anyhow, that was that was a a, a classic deal. So, anyways, you go down and see Bill Alexander. You wind up going back to Vietnam. Yeah, no, no, no. The first group. I, I went to the first group. And God, then, my wife would have killed me if I fell there go back to Vietnam. No, I went to the first group because I wanted to get out of Devons. Yeah. And uh, what happened? What? And then Joe Alderman, he got he. They were forming the Ranger Battalions. Right. He wanted to go in the Ranger Battalions. You, you know, he was like Tommy Shook, Mister Ranger. You know? Sure, sure. And he had two silver stars at Contoon. And Joe, shit for hot. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, and then Fred wanted to go to Vietnam. Whew. And Mrs. A, and that's when I told you we were walking down the hallway trying to find Mrs. A nine. Yeah, yeah. Corridor is. I know that feeling. I've been there. Yeah, you get yeah. It, you can get lost <laughs> in the damn Pentagon in a minute. Oh yeah. All these wings and all this stuff. So anyhow, we're walking down the hallway, we all got our war suits on, you know, and I had the lowest decorations of these two, and 
walking down there. We're all masters. We're all uh, E7s at the time. <laughs> and Fred's got the medal, you know. The medal. Ba- the medal of baby honor. blue with the five stars on it. Indeed. Know? And he's coming down the hallway, and this Brigadier General is coming up the other way. I mean, there are a dime a dozen. You know, but, oh, yeah. Uh, the Puzzle Palace. Yeah, right. And he s- sees us, and he says, God damn. It's Kennedy's rifles. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I never heard that before. Me either. Yeah, Kennedy's rifles. And and Fred looked at me and he says, you're damn right, sir, and don't you owe me a salute? Yeah. And he looked over and saw the shit, and he says, you're damn right, sergeant, and saluted him. And that's a tradition that uh, anybody you meets. You don't have to, but it's right. a traditional thing. Yeah. You're saluting the metal not the man indeed and but any, anyhow it was so funny he says ah uh, i won't ask you guys if you've seen much combat <laughs> 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 all of a sudden there were two purple hearts <laughs> right so moving right along so you get back to first group fred comes along with you or what, what no, happened no, to no. Fred then? no 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 they told <clears throat> fred he couldn't go right because so he had that, the metal that's right so then fred was having you know, life problems like he always did. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he he kind of, you know, he got tired of being drug around to all these this pomp and circumstance sure. stuff, which Medal of Honor winners end up doing. A lot of, yes. Uh, a lot of it. The only ones that get away with not doing this, the officers, you just say, I'm not going to do it. And so anyhow, make a long story short, he went to Oki too, right? Okay. So I'm... I go into Charlie Company Second Battalion, and the Sergeant Major is Harv Harris. No. Yeah. From FOB one yeah. and C at FOB four. FOB four. He's been my Sergeant and Major. Case, and the case on FOB three. Whole fir- my whole tour in Vietnam. Oh, he's my been God. my Sergeant Major. So I walk in there, and he says, uh, "I'm going to put you on a team." And I says, "Okay." I said, "Don't put me on one of these special because I was Halo Scuba." Sure. I said, "I don't want to put up with that," you know. Just, just going out and looking for lobster bullshit, diving and stuff, and, <laughs> or jumping on weekends, you know. Per, yeah. I said, I just want to be on an A team. He says, well, I've got an, an old SOG guy. He's team sergeant, and you can be the intel sergeant. I said, who is his Squirrel Sprouse? <laughs> no. Yeah. So, anyway, he had the team with Squirrel. And there were four of us guys, SOG guys, on that team. No kidding. Yeah. So, we, what happened was, they had those snake bite missions down sure. south. And that would be a six-month uh, rotation? Oh, it was three. Three by that time? Yeah, it was three. And what you basically were doing was just, they were sticking a lot of them on hatchet forces and stuff. And So you eventually wind up going back. When and with your What assignment. happened was, I, my wife hadn't got there yet. Right. I, there was always this quarter, Delay. quarter stuff, getting quarters and stuff. So uh, all, uh, I got conned into Joe Walker. You, really? Yeah, those guys, Lonnie Pulliam, all these guys were volunteering to go back. They they got me in a bad situation. I said, okay, I'll go back. So I got there, and those guys, no, they all went on. They were all contoon guys. You sure. Know, Joe, guy, Joe. Of legend. Yeah, he'd run 30 missions that you know, he was a pop-up tar, and he looked like Doctor Peepers. You know, he had, was glasses, he had yeah. little glasses and stuff. Yeah. Skitty guy, you never know he's a natural-born killer. You yeah. know, and I got there, and they said, "God damn it, we need a cover writer." <laughs> <laughs> so I flew cover at FOB for for the uh, mission for Boudreaux was the was a uh, running the launch site uh, at the Quang Tree Quang Tree launch site. So you flew Covey during your second tour? I threw it in it for a month and a half, and then they said they needed <coughs> one zero, former one zeros and stuff for the Thundercloud program, which was the NBA deal, we, to basically give them uh, SF training, how to right. communicate and all this, and how to uh, contact air and stuff. So they sent me down to Da Nang, to that uh, FOB six where they had the training center. Oh, down at Honok Tao. Down at Tao. Yeah. Sent, sent me down there and I fucking kicked. They told me. <laughs> they told me. Well, you you got to get back to you got to get back 
to uh, Oki. And I says, okay. So I get back there, and, and Carol, they wanted me there because my wife had shown up with two kids. Yeah. And and so anyhow, I got back there and got quarters and all this shit, got settled. And I was down in the Philippines with, with on a team we were on this so-called civic action mission. Right. But we were setting up safe houses and shit because they were fighting the Hucks down there. You know, sure. The, the Muslim deal. Yes. And Nick Nick Roll was in charge of doing oh, everything. No kidding. Yeah, he was. You were there when he was kidnapped and killed. I, you no, know, I left when he got killed. But he was doing it through the State Department. You know, he, right. He the State a, Department Directorate. Yeah, he was. He'd buy, he'd come back. He was the. Uh, he told me he ran for political office in Texas and was a tra state treasurer. No. Yeah. Nick was funny. <laughs> funny guy. Great guy. Yeah. God, the shit he did when he was captured. Well, yeah. He, he trained he a, a hawk to get food. No. Yeah. He trained a hawk and he'd go out and get and This is guy. Nick Rowe who was a, a Green Beret POW for first five one. years. The first one. Yeah. The two guys with him were killed. They shot him. Yeah. Yeah. Bassey and uh, Fortenberg. Right. As a retaliation for the NBA, with BC, I mean, the, uh, Arvin had done to, during Tet, you know, shooting yeah. prisoners and shit, you know. Oh, yeah. So anyhow, uh, Nick was running the operation, and we were, it was Typhoon went through there, and we, we were down with an engineering unit, mm -hmm. and we were supposed to be building, help build schools. So I, the captain I had in charge, he got rifted while we was there. Captain Nash, they was rifting all the captains. And a rift is a reduction of force yeah, as the Vietnamization program and was he'd been in Vietnam too, kicking church. in. So basically in Vietnam, they were reducing the number of troops in country. <laughs> so there's a reduction of force, and this is a rift when people would be demoted. Staying well, or you had to get out. Well, they give some people choices. Some. Yeah, Not all. Yeah, like... Conlon was a captain when he got ripped. Right. And they, he went back to E7. They they let the guys who were senior NCOs and stuff go back. Like, they tried to get me and Spider to take commissions. But there was no guarantee. Now, Spider could have held it because he had a degree at the time. Right. I couldn't. I didn't have a degree. And they tried to have Fubai. They tried to get us. So then graduation. let's move forward to your third tour of duty. Well, you wound up running missions this time was at CCS. Yeah, that and was. You, this is near the end of, because SOG was in eight years from 64 until 72. Your third tour of duty, you return to Vietnam, again with another snake bite team, out of 1st Special Forces Group, signed to SOG, and you wind up on a recon team or doing recon there. Well, what happened? more about that. Well, the second, on my third tour, I was on, I was in the first group. Right. I'd volunteer to go back again. Sure. Because that was good duty. And by now, it's 72? Yes, it's 71. 71, okay. And I got orders. And this is so funny, too. <laughs> I, got, I, I, met, I got orders, and, and Butch Fernandez, a friend of mine who was in, uh, it was a senior instructor in Rikondo School in Vietnam. His first, he's a Hawaiian. He's a kid, I told you. Was, yeah. There was a, a Portuguese Hawaiian. Right. Fernandez, everybody thought he was a Mexican. He used to always give that, you know, surf's up shit every time somebody <laughs> says something to him. So anyhow, Butch and, Butch and me were, got orders. He come down and says, have you got orders to go back? And I says, yeah, I got to get my wife. And he had his wife there, lay on the island, two and two kids. And he said, well, I'm, I'm not. He said, what's the orders for? And I says, God damn, I got to go back to Bragg. And he said, well, that's mine, too. And he said, what for? And I says, report to training command. Well, they set up that recon school. We were in the first class, right? Let's say, this, so just to clarify, this is the first class at Fort Bragg to train Green Berets who are going to be assigned to SOG. Right. So the first question i got to ask, when you get there, are any of the instructors have ever been in SOG? That's a, the that's a crazy portion <laughs> of uh, I get I get there. They, they were out at Camp McCall, which was a training center at the time, the old right. glider. Which, which is still there now. Yeah, now it's for Robin yeah, Sage, Sage and the final phase stuff. of Green Beret training. Right. They do a lot of training. Now. They always have. That's where the uh, the glider units were trained for World War II. World War II, II. yes, sir. They, they still had, when I was in the 82nd, there were still gliders and trees out there. In trees. Yeah. They had never <laughs> removed <laughs> 
you know, and they're nothing but canvas. And yeah. They were, all the pilots are guys that couldn't make it through flight school, so they made them. Made them glider bu- pilots. Bu- bu- glider pilots. <laughs> so anyhow, I, I go out there and report, and the, com- and the sergeant major detachment was Bill Craig, who was a, was a uh, team sergeant at Long Beach. Oh, yeah, of course. And, of course, I knew Bill, and he went, he says, I walk in there, and he says, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> and I says, well, it's the only way I could get my get home <laughs> was to come here, you know. Yeah. So Butch, <clears throat> Butch, he sent his family back to the States. He got orders and stuff sent it, yeah. and he went straight to Vietnam. No kidding. Yeah, he never went. Because uh, he owned a house in, in Fayetteville, so... Mm-hmm. You know, his wife could transition. I had to go back and find a place for Carol and, sure. and Washington State and all that stuff. So anyhow, I get there, and, and I told you about the classes. I get there, and, and like I said, all the goddamn on, on platform instructors were guys out of 101st and 173rd and stuff. There was no SF. No, not one person there had served a Mac B. Sock. And I could see why, because it was a typical clan, uh, can stuff, you know, right out of an FM. That, Field manual. Yeah, that this is the way this class is going to be taught. And it, it was that same crap. You're going to get a target folder with all this information, and then you're going to go out and make a sand table, and then you're going So finicky, man. This temperament must be the female. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Anyhow, they, they, and you know, we find an objective. It looks like your objective, and practice on it. And if, you know, we all know how that worked. You know, they throw a target for you at you and say, "There's the helicopter, get on it." And then they start talking about trackers, how to evade trackers. And, Oh, oh my oh God. God! Was it was it any of it related to what it was really like? No. You'd been there. No, it <sighs> was all some. I I don't know who wrote the POI up for this damn thing, but he definitely was not a recon guy. He didn't right. Know what to, maybe they didn't want to have to do that. They had a manual printed out. Tell you the truth, the guy had showed how to put a stable rig in was was uh, Squirrel Sprouse. He had done all the photos with, because I had to send him one of those manuals. Back huh. he wanted it because he had his picture in it and stuff. Right. But it was it was all this. It was like anything the military does. It's the best scenario stuff. You know? Without being was like being on the ground. Yeah, it didn't prepare. The only thing it prepared these guys for was, this is really dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and thank God it was at the end of the war. Yeah. You know, see when I, and but they the told, NVA was really cranking it up though. Well, what happened? Teams. What happened? Well, not only that, they'd moved. You no, know, all the, all the mechani- all the units had left. Right. The, when I got over there, the fifth group was gone. Their colors and stuff. They, you know, train. They, they, had, you know, that headquarters and I right. said, uh, Sergeant Major Childress is in there. And he got killed later on. And he he had a Swedish K was on a wall, he dropped and was blowback weapon around. No. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Good guy too. He's the one that escorted Barry Sandler Barry Sadler around to all his crap to keep him straight because Barry was drunk all the time. He drank a little. A little. But let's keep moving now. So you you finally get back to your third tour of duty. Well, I get I get back there right. Right. I I. I never went to any of those I went to their field problem out there and set it at the base camp drinking coffee. <laughs> Got my diploma. <laughs> so, so anyway, I get back to Nam and I get to the fifth group, and there's a bunch of Bob Cherry and a bunch of guys who are SOG guys. Yeah. And that's the only thing that's open. The only thing running operations is SOG. And every all the FOBs are TFs, you know, task forces. Right. And... The berets are gone. We're wearing ba- black baseball caps. Right. You know, with your jump wings on it. So th- they're doing that halo crap. And, Ooh. And, yeah. And I'm, you know. Yeah. Halo and you're qualified. halo qualified. Not and only now I'm it. a halo jump master. <clears throat> oh, is that, that's right. So anyhow, Billy Wall's running that deal. Good deal, Billy Wall. Yeah. So I asked Childers, I get it. Of course, he, you know, 
I was an old timer by that time. Yeah, yeah. All these guys, I mean, we all know each. You know, there's a lot of incest in special forces, as you know. And uh, he says, uh, "Where do you want to go?" I says, "As far, far away from you know who as possible." And he says, "Yeah, I see. Yeah, I know your halo." And I says, "Yeah." I says, I says "These people can't can't understand." This is a means of infiltration, and we're not successful <laughs> at Fort Bragg. <laughs> How are we going to do it in the jungles of Vietnam? Yeah. I, and J.D. <clears throat> Bath is a friend of mine. He, of course. And, yeah. and, By that time, J.D. had and, been in. It, oh, yeah. Well, he'd yeah. already ran a mission. I ran into J.D. He was up there. He gave you the insight. And J.D. I says, did they give you a sobriety test? Let me see the, lo <laughs> let me see the lobotomy scar. <laughs> he says, he uh, says, you know, it's hard to say no. And I says, well, I'm going to solve that. I'm going to go to, as I went to Bami, CCS. Yeah, yeah Bami, Bami to it. Bami to it. So I got to Bami to it, and it's a, I'm not kidding you. It was like guys running around trying to get a CIB. Really? Well, yeah, the war was over. Sure. This is 71. Well, Eldon got the DSC while I was there. I was there. Right. FOB4 was still running operations. Yeah, that C was CCN. And CC, and CC was too. But the teams at Bambi Tilt when I got there were all were all run by uh, Luke Luke Dumbeck and Vietnamese Special Forces. Well, that's part of the Vietnamization process. Yeah, it was, and turning we, over to And we were the ground for that. Wow. And I had the only, I was a bright light team to eat. 20th SOS with our gunships, right. Air Force. Yeah. And they wouldn't. The Green Hornets. Yeah, the Green Hornets. They wouldn't fly without an American bright light team, lead team. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, they told them. Sure. So, well, you know, we want to. And those are one of the outstanding units that was attached to SOG for the entire sequence. Oh, these War. guys are shit for hot. Absolutely. Yeah. And they had the state of the art Hueys. Dead November models, two engines. Yeah. And they had miniguns on the doors. They saved okay. our bacon in November of 68. Yeah, that's right. You were down yeah, to our six. Team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they saved a lot of guys. And it was crazy when I got there. They put me down the recon company as their operations sergeant, first sergeant. Right. A recon company. Because I had the most experience. Well, by now, were you still an E7? You had been promoted no, to E7? No, I was an E7. E7. Still an E7. Okay. Yeah, I was an E7. And uh, it, they, Bob Cherry come up with me, and he... They made him in charge of the club. He got rich, and I got shot at. <laughs> <laughs> and Butch was there. Yeah. He was like me. He won't be. He was Halo qualified. Yeah, yeah. He won't be boy. So he was there, and he was the operations sergeant for the uh, Hatchet Forces. And uh, so it was it was crazy. Uh, like I said, it, 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 all this shit's happening. The NBA are coming across the border with tanks and stuff. And the fifth mech was up at the DMZ, right? And that uh, after the uh, they did that big insurgent on Highway Nine into into out of Quezon. The in, Sante, not Sante, uh, Lamson Operation Lamson, Lamson seven nineteen seven seven nineteen. That was going on, Whew. and it was and they it, lost dozens of helicopters. What there. they did was they put seven seven battalions of Arvin in there, and the only good ones they had. They had a Marine unit that was good, and they had an Airborne unit that was good. But they went right up Highway 9, and they sucked them in. They let them come in, and they surrounded them. And then they, the officers uh, ran on them, got in helicopters and left. It was a turkey shoot. And they had the Vietnamese helicopters were all shot up. And so they brought this the Jokers. It was a... Uh, aviation, American aviation, right. and those guys went in and pulled everybody out. And they lost all kinds of helicopters. Dozens. Stuff. Yeah, and those guys, they were. There's they, some new books coming out. Now. Are they? Oh, yeah. There was a big story. Starling. I, uh, Boudreaux was at uh, uh, Quantry when I was there over in the third tour, and he was right down the middle of it. They were, you know, God. they were cut off. And uh, the only thing holding that upper corridor, there was a Arvin Ranger, uh, Arvin Ranger and an Arvin Marine unit, and their advisors were all real Marines and and, right. par and paratroopers, and they fought, and you know they were doing, but it was overwhelming. Uh, they came across. They had T fifty four tanks, they had all the crap, and they were knocking them out. That's when the tow first come in. Right. 
and they had them mounted on Hueys, and they were shooting them, shooting tanks, blowing up tanks and stuff. But so you're down at CCS. Yeah, and they're moving in on us. Right. So what was that like? So did you did you what you went out a couple of missions? Yeah, I went out on uh, uh, one of them was a recovery body recovery of a really? Cav helicopter got shot down on the border. So that was just oh, yeah. a strap hanger team, or did no, no, it was my team. I had a team, Hammer. Hammer? Yeah. No it, kidding. Yeah, it was my. I had the bright light team. Yeah. I took the best. They were all raw day mountain yards. Right. Really good big guys. Sure. Unlike the little brew I had. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> I mean, these guys, and they were all. They'd run missions for years. I had two guys that ran with uh, Mad Dog. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they were good, and I went and recruited these guys because I was there. I knew who was really good, and they let me do everything. The colonel was in charge of compound. It was like recon's yours, you know. So I sure. tell you the truth. I when we closed the place up, I give full rule all of our weapons and stuff. They came, sure, they came in and do some ass, you know, Rod Mountain Yard Society. Oh, is that right? Yeah, Roy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I give them all the weapons. Sure, I give them the keys to. This is funny. The last mission run out of CCS, I ran. And the last mission run out of FOB3, I ran. Right. Wow. So what was the last mission like? Well, the la last mission was another guy, a, 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 a SOS helicopter. Right. Went down in Cambodia. Ooh. And he lost power and went down. And they had all that crap on it. And they didn't want the NBA getting all the sure. stuff they had. They got everybody out. So they sent me in. To destroy the helicopter, you know, retrieved the. Uh, uh, they had a K K KY thirty eights. You know, we had those. Sure. KY thirty. They had it in the helicopter, and it was like, nah, they these, they can't figure this shit out. But they wanted me, you know, thermite grenade that sure. stuff and do all that stuff. So I took the bright light team in there, and I got in there, and here we go again. You get that when you're not under fire constantly, and I. You get this lazy attitude, you know. Sure. And we're kind of walking around like, and we're right in this goddamn open area with elephant grass and bamboo thickets, which is notorious for sure. that, that, AO, that yeah. AO up there in Cambodia. And uh, tell you the truth, I wasn't that far before Mad Dog ended up in MIA on that deal. Right, April 69. Yeah, April 69. And, and I went through training group with Jerry, so. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyhow... We're there, and next thing I know, we start taking sniper fire. Sniper fire? Yeah. And uh, it got so, fuck, we get pinned down there, and we don't know where it's coming from because there was a wood line all around it. We're just, just hitting the helicopter. The air rounds hitting the helicopter. So I asked for guns. For the, so they, yeah. walk, them, they raked the area with the guns and stuff. So I said, well, well let's, let's burn this baby and get the shit out of here. So put the thermite grenades in there, and, and then all the shit they had into the rockets and stuff start going off. <laughs> They're <Whoa>. shooting across there. <laughs> <laughs> I never, that, that didn't reach my capacity of thinking, <laughs> you know, and I was like, oh, God. And, and we looked up, and there was five guys came running across the field trying to, the rockets off the thing had went into the their area that these NBA were in. Yeah. And, and they were trying to they were trying to get out of there. They're trying to E and E for and a misfire. We're, we're all shooting at these guys. I don't think we hit one of them, man. We were just pouring rounds out there. Wow. That was my last mission. It it, it did it was really crazy. Uh we had a launch site, uh those uh, A camp launch sites they used right. to have up there, like they did in all the places. And the one it was right on the border and we were closing it down. So we sent this captain uh, and a, a driver and a, a quartermaster kid who was an S-4 sergeant yeah. up there to retrieve all this stuff. And they just drove down the road like it was. Well, they said they were under fire. So I got the bright light team and loaded them on. And we went down there and unloaded about a quarter mile from where they were at. And I wasn't going to land there. No, no, of course. And walk in so we get down there and they're in a ditch and a, a, a drainage ditch with water in it because there's rice paddies out there and i drug them out of the ditches and shit and get them on have a we're not taking any fire or nothing so i sent two people out to check the area and everything and i got us you know i had them 
us in a uh, secure position yeah. around, around it. I went over to the Jeep and had all kinds of holes in it. And I started looking at the holes, 5.56 holes. <laughs> Uh, not 7.62 from an AK. Eight, yeah, you yeah. can tell the difference. Of so I'm looking at him, and this captain sees me looking at him. He, he, of course, he know my background, you know. Yeah. And I said, so you came under fire there, Captain. Guy we. Yeah. yeah. You came under fire. Yeah, it was, he was trying to get a CIB and stuff because he didn't have one, right? They shot, uh. they shot the Jeep up. So I went, uh, Colonel Hargrove was the commander. He was a classmate of Lindsay. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Colonel was, Fred Lindsay. Yeah, at West Point. Yeah, yeah no right? kidding. Yeah, and Hargrove was on the... Uh, and Fred Lindsay was a CEO at CCS but, earlier. Yeah, for a long time. He yeah. was there for... Yeah, and and he, he, got, he went down on the, on the Air America plane with the... Uh, oh, God, the CIA guy that uh, wrote the book. Got the, the, Frank uh, Snap. No, um, I don't think of his name. Van. Vance. Oh, John Paul Van. Yeah, he went down there. They were going in the contour. And I was I was going to go with him. I was going to take over Recon Company at, uh, C, at CNC. Right. And they gave me a choice to go home and do that. And I said, I'm going home. Yeah. We lost this fucking war, man. I'm out of here. Wow. And uh, anyhow, I get back there. And, of course, they, they bring me in and all this stuff. And I says, I told uh, Colonel, I, said, I want to talk to you. And Bud Spicer was the uh, was a sergeant major, and he was a CCN guy. You know, Bud was. I says, this is a setup. These guys shot up this jeep, and they all go, well, be quiet. But you know, this guy's an officer. You know, mm. and I says, and uh, Hargrave said and looks at me. He said, what do you think we ought to do? And I said, get him the fuck out of here. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have diarrhea of the mouth here pretty soon. I can't keep this in. They can't pin a goddamn CIB on these assholes. So the next day they chucked him out. Wow. That's how sad it was here. To and then we left. All the Arvin units in the area left. And we were out there by ourselves again. Is that right? And they're bringing T-54 tanks in on Bambi to it. Yeah, we. it was like... It was crazy time. And then here we go. We left all the little people. Of course, they were all yards, and they all joined the furrow and stuff. Went in the, our, the Vietnamese we had in the compound. Say, who, explain what the furrow was. Oh, it was a mountain yard society. Basically, they wanted their independence right. from the Vietnamese because they'd been persecuted by both sure. North Vietnamese and South. And South, yeah. Yeah, so they, ra they raised up in... 1964, I think, or five. And basically, they used Special Forces ace camps as their thing. And they kidnapped all the SF guys, kept them out of the way, and they bargained, you know, yeah. for the stuff. And, of course, the Vietnamese solution was to come in and kill them all. And there, there was always that deal with Fu Ro and the, and the colonel in charge of the uh, Rade mm -hmm. in the camp, he was had a full role for that district. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I knew all the, of course they knew, you know, I was one of them, you know. So yeah, yeah. And they, I had the only team and everything else. And he'd come in and smoke cigarettes and drink coffee with me, you know, the time and bullshit. So when I left, I had all, I had all the rifle racks and stuff, and hell, I had everything in Because you know you're going to wind up fighting. The well, it was crazy, all the stuff we had in there were like Sten guns with silencers, those yeah, Sten yeah. guns with silencers. And, uh, Car 98s, German rifles that right. they used in World War II. Wow. Car, carbines, tons of carbines, M1s. <sighs> and of course, they used them for CIDG when they used to just, right. you know, the old A camp deals. And I had racks full of these things. And then I had a bunch of M16s and stuff like that. No cars. Okay, so you wrap up, you return back to uh, um, Guam, I mean, uh, Okinawa. No, no, no. Where'd I, you go back? To Washington State? Yeah, I went back to Devons. Oh, yeah, I went back to Devons. That's worse than being a nom. No, I it was <laughs> and I, it it was better than Bragg. Yeah, was that right? Yeah, it was better than Bragg. And it, it, the big thing particularly because they're doing all the, well, all I had the a riffs. I was a I had a team. I was a team sergeant of the Satum team. And what's his what? 
special weapons. <laughs> Indeed. Nuclear included. Yeah. <laughs> we can't talk about that. It's no. still classified. Yeah. <laughs> so I had the Satan team, and Tommy Shook had the scuba team. Ron Brockman had the Halo team. And all of us guys in Charlie Company, second, we were all at Saw guys. It was so. It was known as the Saga. My team won the Larry Thorny Award two years in a row. No, I was kidding. Yeah, for excellence in training. Wow. And uh, any because I had, oh, I had veterans, man. Sure. Super hot guys, man. These guys, you know, we went to a reforger in Germany, man. And hell, we almost captured the whole first calf. <laughs> <laughs> we were on the we were on the Rhine River calling in airstrikes and everything else. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, similar later. Yeah, sure, of course. The, the town below <clears throat> us had bullet holes from World War II and all the buildings. Yeah. It was a big bat. They'd come across the bridge there. You know, now getting across the Rhine was a big deal. Absolutely. And the Germans had left all their bullet holes there as a reminder. Indeed. Yeah, I'll never forget. They had a guest house down there. We went down there later. And, and my team leader, Captain Eckhart, he was a retired colonel, German, right? He was he was a medic. And Mike Force, what, uh, what when Sincere was there, he was a uh, buck sergeant. They went, okay. He went to University of Puerto Rico, got the ROTC, <laughs> went to GI mm. Bill, and, yeah, came, yeah. and came back on active duty. So he was a German. I had four German speakers. My AO was Portland. Portland, uh, Poland, okay. Because the Iron really, Curtain, yeah, the Iron Curtain was still up. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So that was a. I had no Polish speakers on the team. <laughs> yeah. I'd been through Vietnamese language school, you know. Should have went to, not, we lost that war. Then go to you know, so I had <laughs> I have German speakers on team and Pete Onberg, who's my medic, who was a uh, he'd went he he went to uh, school in Germany, and his best friend was one of the Kinderhof, the kids that the the super race kids. Oh right, yeah, that they raised sure, and and. and and Bat and Batos was the uh, SS, you know, training school. So that was the basis for the Tenth Special Forces Group. Which yeah, was that the was old the, SS. Well, the desk that <clears throat> that uh, that the commander had there was Patton's desk. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's where Patton run his, you know, sure. his uh, where he took all the goddamn Gestapo people and put them in charge because they're the only ones that knew how to run anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, oh my God! Anyhow, and the, and and. Uh, the headquarters, the best building was uh, Hemmler's home. No kidding. Yeah. So your career in the Army wraps up when? I, have, I come out of ROTC, the University of Utah. <clears throat> I had orders to go. I got here. I got orders. Here to being Utah. Yeah. I was Salt like, Lake City area. Was, yeah. We, uh, we're skiers, me and Carol. And sure. Kids all ski. I've skied in Japan, Germany, you know, all over the place. And. Uh, you know, it's a bug you catch when you're young, before the lift <laughs> prices went up. Yeah. And uh, I told you the story about Billy, you know. I was supposed to go to Cornell University. Right. In uh, Ethica, New York. Yeah. I went up there for, and the goddamn PMS was a bird colonel, airborne. And he saw me and going, God, Sarge, get, I'm glad to see you. These damn officers, they were the crap I got. <laughs> he was good. Uh, so I was going, and that, that's really a nice area. And Cornell's an Ivy League school. Oh, sure. Yeah. So Billy Billy calls me up on the phone. Bill, and we're talking about Billy Alexander, who handles SF assignments yeah. at the Pentagon, Reser who Reser you and I had visited yeah, yeah. at different he, he, times and get orders she direct. Had, she handled the enlisted end yeah. of, of the uh, And her husband is a CIA analyst. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So, you know, they, they got more analysts than sure. they got field operators. So anyhow, she calls me up and she said, Pat, I got bad news. I went, uh, you know, like Carol's all excited getting away from this shit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to Salt Lake. And uh, I mean to Ithaca. And she says, I got a guy coming back from from the tenth group. I didn't know him. And he's going to Rensselaer Tech in New York. Yeah. And they closed the ROTC detachment up. She says, I've got no place to put him. And he's home. He's from Long Island. And he wants to retire after. And I said, well, you know, the old saying, sympathy is somewhere 
between shit and syphilis in the dictionary. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and they say, yeah, oh, sounds terrible there, Billy. Can Any we, more good can news? We, can't wait to get to Ethica. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I got, and she says, no, I want you to think about this. She said, you can still go. She says, I'm not telling you you can't, but I got seven s- slots open in the West. And I know you guys are Westerners. And she told me, one of them was to Brigham Young. I said, oh, boy, I'll fit in there. <laughs> <laughs> this, one, this, you know, right. one, former Roman Catholic show up there, man, they think the sky is falling in. So uh, you know, I wanted to go to Washington because Carol's from Washington. And they had, they had one open. It was Washington State, and it's over in Pullman, which is, you know, it's like the shithole of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. It's in, you know nothing over there. That's too far away. Yeah, it's no skiing over there. Too. Yeah. So she said, "Well, University of Utah." And I said, "Sign me up, man." Said, so you come out. You do the ROTC program. Yeah, I was the senior instructor. I taught tactics, survivor. I had the Ute Scouts, was the Ranger. I had two Ranger slots, and I had four. Airborne slots I could give every year. At what point do you go to the VA as an employee? Well, what happened once I, when I retired, I went to After work. After how many years, Pat? 24, 7 in the Marines and 17 in the Army. They even counted my Marine Corps time. They did. <laughs> <laughs> they better. So, uh, so I, I, uh, I retired, and I, I, had, I went on a recruiting thing, you know, filling slots. Yeah. And— Football program always looking for easy jobs for the jocks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> these guys, these guys make good privates in the airborne. You know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so we got them in introductory into ROTC classes, which was a credit no credit class. And I got them. And we were on a body count thing because it was after Vietnam, and the, you know, the military sure. fell out of grace. And we just, it was all body count. So I I went over and. Got to know one of the assistant football coaches, and his dad was a Marine at Camp Pendleton. He was a retired colonel, uh, Tom Gad, and uh, he was the defensive coordinator. So I says, What's this deal? And he said, Well, that sounds like a good deal. Go see their academic advisor. So I started getting football players over now. Got two of them, stayed and got commissioned after they dropped down. Program one of them ended up colonel, so I had this all this stuff. Well, the guy that was the equipment manager and facilities guy, I had a stroke <laughs> putting up with football players. On the, oh there, no! There were some privates in the Marine Corps, <laughs> 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 and so they he, and I was getting ready to get out, and I was going. I was finishing up college, you know. I yeah, was yeah. Taking all these clep tests and all this shit. Yeah, so but, you're you're improving your academic standing in life. Yeah, as as and you're still in ROTC. Yeah, and what you're I lovely would, downtown Utah. It had Utah. nothing to do with academics. It was get my ticket punched for I could get a good job at a phony degree, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> I if, if the University of Phoenix was gone, then I would have been down there. You know? <laughs> so, anyhow, they co- they called me up and said they had this. Would I be interested in this job? It's, yeah. And I said, yeah, you know, working with this, all that stuff. So I, I went, o- I went over to uh, what, what, four years I worked for the athletic department. But we were, that was before their Pac-12 football high. Right. You know, oh, yeah. we were in the Mountain West in the WAC. Sure. In those days, and uh, you know, our football players, you know, they were. Living five in a house and living off subsistence. Well, we put some kids in the NFL too, you know. Sure, oh yeah. That, that kind of stuff. And the bad thing was BYU was beating us every year and that was making <laughs> stuff happen. And uh, I got Carol worked for an aerospace company, Hercules Corporation, in yeah, yeah. Rocket Motors. Mm-hmm. She was the administrative assistant for the president of the company. Wow. So a job opened in the over there and is in documentation as a procedure writer that you would have fit in perfectly <laughs> your background you know my literary thing consisted of comic books and <laughs> so i would have did that 
and they went uh, when the Berlin Wall went down. Yeah, they quit making all these missiles and stuff, so they sold out to another outfit, and I got rifted. So I'm out looking for a job, you know that kind yeah. of stuff. So I said, "Well, I, I, I tried. I post office. You know, I was that desperate. Yeah, yeah. So I went down to the postal test, and I passed all of them. You know, they yeah, give yeah. you ten percent. Oh, is that right? Yeah, on, on your, on your, uh, uh, if you have a Purple Heart. Sure. On the test, on all my tests were over a hundred with that ten percent. So anyhow, I was going. to, Oh God, I'm going to. I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm a mailman, you know. Yeah, yeah. So anyhow, I, I was <laughs> doing that. So I says. Yeah. Let me go over and see what the VA has offer. So I go and put him for a job at the VA, and they had a job open in in uh, nephrology, which is dialysis and, right, and sure. all this stuff for the administrator to run their right. Their, they had a home dialysis program for supplies. Yeah, yeah. And all this stuff and keep all the paperwork stuff. So I went over and interviewed, and the doctor was a German doctor who was ran that thing. And I think he was a little leery of me because I, I was older and more wiser. and everything. But what the shit I had in the military, he couldn't turn me down. I had a degree. Yeah. He couldn't turn me down. So they hired me, and I did that for two years. And the guy who was a safety engineer for the facility, he was a— he was a cannon cocker in Vietnam. Uh, he was on Camp Carroll. Really? 175, sir. Yeah, up in I Corps. I Corps. And we got to be friends. The VA's full of employees at that time were veterans. Sure. Because you got priorities. And so I got to be friends with him. And uh, he put in for another job in, in uh, uh, Denver, where our headquarters was at. And he recommended me for his job. Well, I never had a background in that, you know. Sure. But SF, always flexible. Always. <laughs> so, you know, like, you know, next thing you know, I'm fucking Mr. OSHA, OSHA expert and all this stuff. Got on the line and got, and, and I had power protection too. So they turned around and they hired me temporary on a temporary basis. Right. A 90 day evaluation. So I made it through that, and I worked for a woman. She was a head nurse. Mm -hmm. It felt, and she was, my, and she was, she loved me because I, you know, I had a, I had this ability to interface with people, sure, and get stuff done. So they decided they're going to send me to fire protection school at the University of Maryland to learn the engineering about sprinkler systems, sure, and because I had to inspect. That's a whole science in itself. Yeah, I had to inspect nursing homes and all these outpatient clinics, and I had five states I had to do. Five? Five states. And uh, all these, you know, where there's more sheep and people states. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wyoming, <laughs> Idaho, <laughs> Nevada. But it was fun driving through it. Yeah, what, what it, it was, I, I loved it, because I was my own boss. I did what I wanted to, and then I had a guy that worked with me. He was the, uh, in charge of all the, uh, Industrial stuff like the, the liquids and anything that was car genuine, you know, medicines and stuff like that. He had storage of that and handling of that. And he was also what they called the uh, uh, emergency preparedness because that was one of our jobs. If they had a, you know, a, a biological or chemical attack, sure. The VA hospitals turned into a triage center for. All this stuff. Oh no, kidding! Yeah, and oh, that wow. was really interesting. I got in. They sent me to us. They sent me to the University of Colorado for right. a course on that crap. And that was we set up uh, tents outside and you know, all to do scrubbing, scrub people down. Sure, and sure. And then the Olympics come in and they. That's nineteen eighty. No, when was no, the no. The, Olymp the Olympics come in in two thousand. Yeah, we had it here in Seoul. Right. And Governor we're, Mitt. And they something. brought they brought Romney. In the oh, running because of yeah. Mormon Church, right? They wanted, and Romney, you know, he's an organizer and stuff. Sure. So he found out I was doing this for the VA and stuff, and they, we were in that panic because of 9 11. Sure. And all that crap. So they, they got me, he wanted to put me in charge of all nights. Well, they won't pay me enough money for that to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he says, well, 
He said, well, maybe we can come up with some uh, budget. I said, I can't accept that. I'm, I'm a government employee. I can, yeah. I said, you ought to know that. And he was governor sure. in Massachusetts. At that yeah. Time. And so he, and he got, he kind of twisted around, but he got things done because the guy they had him for that, he had to get her, go down to the temple to have anybody tell him what to do. But that was interesting. They brought uh, sure my helipad was used by Bush for you come in for the yeah thing. And I had to stand out there with a fire extinguisher as they come out. <laughs> he run over and shook my hand. Hey, <laughs> glad to have you fireman here. No, oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, then I worked for the VA. I retired from there. From, worked there eleven years. Retired GS twelve. Uh, I'm triple dipping. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. The hard way. The hard way. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I think we're kind of wrapping up here. Any final little thoughts or a couple of little vignettes that you want to flash back on before we uh, begin to draw the curtain close? Uh, when in a firefight, find the smallest guy to throw in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> that's, re- that's the reason... That's the reason Lou just said a man blended in with the mountain yards so easily. Indeed. I look like a name and stake out there with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lou DeSetta, who, by the way, uh, survived a tour of duty with the uh, 173rd. He was on 875. 875 on Thanksgiving Day or right before Thanksgiving Day. He still won't eat Thanksgiving dinner over there. Right. When they took, they took the hill and then a unit, we won't say which pilot dropped the 500 pound bomb on the command post and that night i mean that's one of those most killed, killed, weird stories killed all the staff of yeah officers and lou was there and yep. that night he was hyper alert because he had so much activity in the jungle and they thought he thought that the nva were coming but they never attacked because in the morning when the sunlight came up he saw that there were animals coming out to They're retrieve eat, the body parts eat, eat, that were yeah. in the jungle yeah. from that bomb explosion. Yeah. And Luda said it. Then, after a tour of duty with the herd, Surviving Hill 875 volunteers to go to SOG. No, that's not the story. It was, he went on R&R to Natrang. Right. And they had the ice cream machine there and all yeah. that. Of course, he was a, a jungle rat. You know, oh, yeah. Eating that. Uh, seas, three out of, you know, lunk it, lug and all the water they used and everything. And he said, man, this is life for me. Yeah. I don't want to go back to the 82nd. Yeah, So absolutely. he volunteered for special forces, and he thought he was going to be. They told him, well, we'll get you a job here in a train. Next thing he got orders, said, <laughs> drawer 22. <laughs> yeah, which is the C and C, SOG. SOG. He ends up at KSOG with me. That was his first. Oh, yeah. He, he, I'll never forget. He, he came in, he was smoking a cigarette, drinking a cup of coffee with his flu. Me or Godwin, neither one smoked or drank. Yeah. And we a little coffee, and we had all that sea ration coffee. He thought he was in heaven, you know. <laughs> and he sat there and he said, You know what, Sergeant Watkins? And I said, No, Lou, what? <laughs> he said, Nobody in Wilmington, Delaware gives a shit about Lou just said that. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remind him of that all the time. So he's still living in Bear, Delaware. Hope to get him. Yeah, lined he up called someday. me up yesterday. Did he? How's he doing? He's a hard dude, man. They he had is. they were shoveling dirt in his face two times. He said, "I ain't ready to go." Yeah, yeah. He's still out riding his damn motorcycle. He is. And he's out there with his daughter and his granddaughter now. Oh, yeah, beautiful yeah. little girl. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And but you got to share with us, and uh, before we close out here. How did Lou capture or eliminate rats at Quezon? Oh, God. <laughs> we had these silencer pistols, uh, high, high standards. The 22. twenty-two high standard with a silencer. With a silencer. You know, Which were from, left over from World War II, the yeah, OSS had it. That's exactly right. It was yeah. Good for shooting rats and, and, and bumblebees. That's about it. <laughs> You know, I mean, I mean, could you see? Hey, the Frenchman it? killed a dog with one. That yeah, was good. My but, favorite dog story. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyhow, we had. I had. I had my mine. I got from when I was there for before, and I. Yeah. I used to lug it around the pink with it and stuff like that. Yeah. 
and Lou fell, you know, Lou's knives and guns, you know. Oh, yeah. God. He had, to this day. He come in, he had a shoulder holster, you know, with a, with a Browning high power in it and all this shit. And I went, God, God, I got John Wayne that lived with me. So he's, he says, hey, Sergeant Watkins, can I, can I, uh, can I see your pistol? And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. And I was up in, you know, we were in the bunkers. And sure. Oh, yeah. And, and mosquito nets keep the rats off of us because they were just, you know, they were everywhere. Oh, yeah. Feeding and off. these are caisson rats, which are oh, yeah. bigger than cats. They were, they, they were feeding off the NBA. They were dead out there. We had sure. bodies laying out in the wire and stuff still from the original, you know, for the big oh, stage. Yeah. And uh, skeletons all over the place. It was a lot of horror movie. And uh, anyhow, he was taking that sea ration cheese and baiting <laughs> these rats, right? And this was at nighttime. I'm up there reading something, a letter or something on top, and I hadn't pulled that net down. Uh, and all of a sudden, I heard this, psh, you know, damn rat was running across the upper on the upper scale, you know, and these rats look like dogs. Oh, like yeah, dogs. they're big. And uh, jungle rats. And they, he fell down, he'd wounded, and blood's everywhere, and it's on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get away. <laughs> I'm trying to get the rat off me, you know, the stuff. Finally, the rat gets, takes off. And I turn around and Lou Stanner knew with the pistol, and he sees me. You know, the Irish in me had come up. Yes, indeed, like, indeed. Like, <laughs> you know, uh, I put up with a lot of shit, but I ain't putting up with you shooting rats and some. <laughs> no. So I said, Give me that goddamn gun, Sergeant. I says you, you. I will not see you ever again discharge a weapon without my permission. And Lou, you know, he he was all grunt military. Oh yeah, absolutely. a staff sergeant tells him something, and he did it. He listens, yeah. Yeah, and it was like he oh. and all he could say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, well, not only that, you're a piss poor shot. You only wounded this damn thing. <laughs> now he's crawled up and he's going to die. Die up, up there and, and stink. And stink the place and maggots are going to be dropping out. <laughs> and he's, he, uh, and you know how Lou is. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll get up there tomorrow some yards and clean that place up. So they're out there. I I never told him to do it. They're removing sandbags and stuff. He's got the, my yard team out there. Yeah. And they're finding baby rats, you know, Ooh. these little pink rats yeah. and they find nest of them send the yards are out there they start a fire and they're throwing the baby rats in there and they're taking them out and eating them like pop, snacks like popcorn oh, yeah, you yeah. know <laughs> and loose i says goddamn the set of you get over there and get your share you you're the hunter gatherer in this bunch <laughs> it's a whole new definition of rat tattooing <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah i don't like <laughs> yeah yeah, it, uh. it, yeah we had a kid <clears throat> in the cop you know we always praise we had so much shrapnel in it from the crap coming in. Oh, yeah, grounds. yeah. Grounds. Tell you the truth, that I got that picture of that cobra landed up by us mm -hmm. that they couldn't, you know, lost the engine power. Right. An hour later, it was on fire. They started shooting at it. They mortared it and everything. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And it was like, you know, don't have any short rounds. Get that damn helicopter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, they picked up, there was a, uh, one of those ammo cans. Yeah. One of the yards went up there, picked, and it was a seven stepper in there, and bit him. And the kid knew what it was, of course. Sure. You know, he started running. They're trying to tackle him to get him down to cut his finger off, and he started foaming his mouth and died. Right, right there. Right there. He got more than seven steps with the seven stepper. Yeah, yeah, he did a circle. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he had a small body. Too. Uh, well, look, uh, we're at that point, sir. Any any last serious final thought? <clears throat> no, it's a, it's a pleasure to see that we have these young Americans and stuff that still know how to produce and get things done. Absolutely. We're here at, uh, um, again, with uh, Michael Glover's uh, center, one of his three offices, his headquarters for uh, field craft survival. And uh, we've had just a couple of events here over the weekend where there's SEALs, combat SEALs, DJ, and Cole, who've been through over 10 years of combat. Yeah, both They've of been together 16 years. Medically discharged. Medically remember. discharged. But you look at it, they're still in shape. And they're all they're starting their podcast soon. Well, I, I challenge them if they could run as fast as we could to a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> under fire, under fire. <laughs> like they were too. Yeah. But uh, oh, it's just amazing. And each new generation that continues to build, and there are still Americans out there that are stepping up to the plate to serve our country. Well, you got a stepson who was in, in Afghanistan. He got blown up. No, he's in Iraq, but he was mm-hmm. he was blown up. He's back in track now, and he's yeah. uh, he's in construction. But thank you for mentioning Evan. Yeah, Evan. Our pride and joy. Kid. Yeah, a good kid. Absolutely. Well, with that, sir, <clears throat> we're going to close out. Thank you for being with us. And we, as always, when we, in closing, we thank our military, Border Patrol, first responders, and the, and today, because of our historic moment in time with the Ukraine erupting with the Russian invasion, uh, we're not sure what's going to stem from all that. But for our military in particular, we thank them. We also thank the men and women who have served in years past. Here was like Pat Watkins, a man that I've admired, who helped me and many a young Green Beret when we landed at FOB1, shared his expertise along with John McGovern and, of course, Spider Parks. And uh, I like to think that's part of the reason why I survived was thanks to getting the hand off and you gentlemen. Just worried about the rifle range with you guys. Indeed. Well, <laughs> we won't talk about that now. We also remember and salute the men and women who have not been able to return. And today, we still have 1,583 Americans that are still officially listed as missing in action in Southeast Asia from the Vietnam War. That includes Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. North Vietnam. And North Vietnam. Yes, Vietnam is one country now. Oh, yeah. And then uh, <laughs> there's a couple that uh, yeah. from China and yeah, a couple in Thailand. We, we, but, we, uh, but we salute them and those that have served our country today. And we also want to thank, again, Jocko Willing Productions, his team with Echo Charles, and our newest member, Swinging Hot and Heavy here, helping us out. Go to Kerry Helton. And we thank, um, and we're doing this in conjunction with SOG Chronicles. And uh, if you haven't seen SOG podcast number 23, that's another one with uh, Sergeant Major Pat Watkins here. So, again, thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the show. God bless America.